from today's transport evolved ev sales are doubling year on year elon and johnny get done for speeding and my leaf loses its first capacity bar coming up next on transport evolved <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to episode number 196 of Transport Evolved, recorded on Friday, April 18th, 2014. My name is Nikki Gordon Bluefield. And I'm Mark Chasley. How are you today, Nikki? I'm very well, thank you. I hope you've had a day off, Mark, because it's a <laughs> bank holiday and all that. Yeah, I, some some people keep telling me that today's meant to be a day off for people. It's it's been a manic day to the point of manic days where I had to message Nikki going, I can't do anything with transport involved. It's too much work. Ah, oh, help! Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've got uh, an echo for some reason, and I'm not sure where that echo is coming from. But let's just carry on, shall we? We yes, we have a, we have a slightly um different setup today. I'm in a new place um because i i'm visiting in-laws and nikki has has um uh, i'm guessing you're in your your little normal studio I'm in my little normal studio but today what we're trying to do is we're going to try and solve the 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 the, 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 the <laughs> problem that we've been having for having 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 for the past few weeks um, now i'm not sure if it's going to do that and if it would that would be naughty. But joining us today is a, a man who knows all about video look at his lovely blue screen ben <laughs> nelson welcome to the show Hi there. Yeah, we could put the weather behind me or something, I suppose. Yes. Yeah. So tell us about the weather in Minnesota. Oh, God. Minnesota. Uh, I'm in Wisconsin, but oh, you know, Wisconsin. kind of there in the middle. Sorry, of I thought you were in Minnesota. Sorry. <laughs> uh, close enough. I've been accused of being Canadian as well. But uh, <laughs> uh, right now it's sunny outside and uh, it's, it's a bad time for ice fishing. The ice is finally off the lakes in my area. But uh, still had snow a couple of days ago and my neighbor was mowing his lawn yesterday. So that's just uh, kind of spring in my area here. Oof. I, 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 I saw pictures of people on Facebook this week who had done just that. They go, well, you know, it was 20 degrees yesterday and I was out on the bike and now it's snowing. We don't have that in the UK, do we, Mark? No, I, and it's such a shame. I used to love snow around Easter. In fact, when I was younger and, you know, when, you, when you're, you're sort of just starting, when you're kind of five, six, seven, when you're just starting to sort of piece together how the world really works, I was convinced because I knew Easter moved every year. And I was utterly convinced that Easter was defined as the first weekend after it snowed. First weekend after it snowed after Christmas. So I got very, very excited <laughs> one year when it snowed like three days after Christmas. I thought Easter was like just... Oh, I'm getting candy again. I've got the mother load. <laughs> but, then, but then no, apparently it moves <sighs> within a set constraint. And I got all sad and didn't have chocolate. That's sad. That's really, really sad. Okay, so um, Ben, what have you been up to lately? Because you've been quite busy in the in the evening. Oh world. gosh, well, it's um, it's kind of funny. Winter is is kind of kind of slow for my projects, just because I've got a, a really basic unheated garage that the wind shoots straight through. So mostly in the winter, I've been helping out with other people's projects. Uh, a friend of mine is working on doing some kits for electric motorcycles for drive shaft electric motorcycles. So you can just get an old bike, rig it up with a golf cart motor and get going. I've been trying to help out some friends who, um, they're making some really nice little uh, electric scooters with a removable lithium battery pack. So like if you live in an apartment, you just pull the battery pack out, you know, just walk up to your apartment, charge it from the wall. Um, let's see other things. Uh, M. Paul Holmes is back to working on the thousand amp version of the Open Revolt uh, do-it-yourself motor controller. So that's kind of an exciting thing. Um, for a little winter project, I built a ice scooter. I, uh, found oh, a little brilliant. electric scooter in a, it, it was, uh, in a dumpster and a couple of parts were missing, including batteries, um, and the front wheel. So I put a ice skate in place of the front wheel and I added some screws to the back tire to give it traction. And I was, uh, zipping around on the frozen lake this winter with that. And my, my little girl liked that a lot because I rigged it up so I could tow a sled behind it. So I had her in the sled and then me. Just standing on this little ice scooter, zipping around. But uh, 
it was a lot of fun and i'm really looking forward to summer i'm going to be at a bunch of festivals um including at midwest renewable energy association fair uh we do a clean car show there we're going to have team illuminati there this year who you might remember from the uh automotive x prize so uh, that's that's going to be pretty fun i'm i'm hoping if we're really lucky we can go for a ride in it or uh you know maybe even test drive but uh we'll see but looking forward to it you know springs in the air and it feels like it's ready to get out there and get working on projects i think this weekend is the first time that i felt yeah you know look spring's finally on the way i've been wearing nothing um like an overcoat or anything today so that's that's cool i just want to apologize (laughs) people who are watching the live stream live may have seen the intro music suddenly come over ben um for some reason i think it's pebcac this is my control board um, and this is one, two, three, lower third for Ben. I can make Ben appear and disappear. But for some reason, a minute ago, uh, it was set up wrong. Sorry. So we had the intro <laughs> music. It's the bank holiday in the UK. We're, and we're doing a show. That's got to be impressive. It, yes. Full stop. So talking about shows and stories, shall we start at the beginning? And, Let's start and at talk the beginning. Through, uh, it's a very good place to start. Um, so the BMW i3 has one, not one, but two world of the year uh, awards um announced yesterday at the new york international auto show first day yesterday i think um the bmw i3 was awarded the world green car of the year and also the world car design of the year um now obviously the green car uh, of the year award was because of its innovative design the way that the carbon fiber was used in its construction the way that bmw had effectively gone back to the drawing board and and started again from scratch um with the whole car concept mark was that you laughing no no i i'm I'm digesting that i i haven't had chance to catch up today but i'm digesting i i i question the truthfulness of all of those statements i guess maybe the whole idea that they rethought or gone back to the drawing board about what a car really is is not the case surely yes i understand that what they've done is they've looked at the the process of its creation from mm-hmm. the beginning to end yeah. and i i really really think bit what bmw have done with the creation and how they've offset all the carbon they're using renewables to make the car from beginning to end is absolutely brilliant but to say that they rethought what a car is really I don't know. That seems a bit a stretch too far for me. I I still haven't driven one, um, but so I I still don't quite know how it handles. I mean, the the it also won world. You said um, design world design it car. Did. Yeah. It did um, for its its innovative design and the fact that it's it's quite spacious inside and yet it's still a city yeah. car. Um, from the green car, I think it deserves the green car of the year award because it's the it's the only real EV we've seen this year on a global stage that i think redefines um the segment and that is luxury plugins um and i think it deserves it for the for the for the route planning which is another thing that the judges brought up the fact that this is the first car where you can do a route plan from a to b that doesn't include your car so oh um, that's interesting so so ben you could for example go uh you could you could go across town um and park up at the nearest uh, railway station and the route planning would take into consideration you know when the next train's going to leave and when you get off the train maybe a bicycle share scheme that you could take part in and then sounds like a good idea then, yeah it's I mean, a great certainly idea. like uh google maps for example has uh you know you can set it up for walking directions or car directions or mass transit and it seems a little bit uh going against the uh, car manufacturers' interest to uh, include something other than the car, but uh, for the end user, that's that's definitely a, a great option to have in there. It, it, I think it it certainly got a a um, a potential new way of thinking about the way that, that that transportation is is carried out, and I think it's something that car makers have been afraid of doing to this point. You know, the idea of you might make a journey and leave your car behind. Um, but I'll give you an example. You know, two, three weeks ago, I had to go into London with a meeting for a meeting with Mark. And I think we talked about this before, Mark. We, um, you took the train all the way. 
um, because where I live, the train is really expensive. I drove well, that's gonna happen, it? halfway it's, I think it's to to uh, the the. I, I drove halfway um, to where I was going to to go. Then I got out of my car, parked my car up, got out of it, and that got on the it. train for that next part of the journey. Um, and that for me was a lot quicker than driving all the way into the centre of uh, in centre of London. Um, so I think it works. Um, as of the design, there's nothing really that, that I like that much about the BMW i3's design. I think it's a bit of a love it or loathe it. Ben, do you like it? Eh, eh, eh. It's, it's, eh. It's, it's okay. I mean, it, it certainly doesn't draw my eye. Uh, the other day I was out driving around and I kind of turned my head as I, I drove past an intersection because there was a Tesla Model S there. It's, it's kind of unmistakable. Go, Ooh, eye. look at that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, you know... BMW, eh, it, you know, it looks fine. Um, Mark. I, I quite like, I see the design. I was very, very against the design when I'd only seen it in images. Seeing it in person completely changed that. And I kind of like it for how, I suppose it's subtly, it's, it's odd enough that you look at it and go, that's slightly strange and then you look at it some more and go well, well maybe it's not that strange and and it's kind of has these different layers where your your mind kind of goes that's a bit odd oh no actually no it's oh maybe it's a bit odd and no it's not and that kind of continues all the way through the car even mm -hmm. to the boot which the the there's bits of the back of the car overlap the boot and jut out and your brain mm -hmm. kind of goes that's odd oh but i quite like it but it's odd and then you open both the doors and it's got that the double door suicide doors opening and you go that's odd Oh, but it actually kind of works. And yeah. I quite like that they've committed. I don't know if this was intentional, but they seem to have committed to this sort of ambiguity around whether it's a new modern type car or quite yes. a traditional car. And yeah. they followed it through. The I, other thing I was going to say, the GPS, I believe the GPS also, when it calculates e most eco route, takes um, elevation changes into yes. account, which is a first. Oh, wow. Which is something that I really wish that I could have. Um, uh, you car. know, actually, um, one thing that works pretty well is there's a lot of um, GPS applications you can get for smartphones that they're really designed for like joggers mm -hmm. and they work really, really well um, in electric vehicles because a lot of those little apps do take into account elevation. So you can actually drive whatever electric car, um, have a little jogging app on your smartphone. And those actually work really well for uh, calculating out routes. I've, I've kind of had some fun playing around with one of those. Uh, a while back, we had a big uh, electric bus built by a local university, and it was going to be doing a long trip that it couldn't do on one charge. So they stopped at my house to recharge, and we were uh, talking about how elevations uh, came into play here because it's uphill one way and downhill the other. And huh. uh, the driver that was just using a little uh, fitness jogging application. Wow. So, you know, why not put stuff like that built right into a car? Oh, I, I think you're going to have to tell me those apps. We're going to maybe you should link to some of those apps. Maybe that's a future article for our site, um, mm. for 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 various things. Because I'm making a trip in six weeks that I would really appreciate that kind of, <laughs> of knowledge in. We'll come to that later on in the show because we'll announce that later on. Um, one of the things that um I was going to add about the BMW i3's design is um it's a, it is very much a Marmite car. Um, <laughs> which is you either love it or loathe it. I don't know if Americans even understand that whole con. What uh, not Marmite, you'd have to translate that one. Okay, yeah. so it's a it's um it's a, like yeast a yeast based yeast based a yeast extract based. See, that just means coffee. nobody here is going to like it. It's but. like uh, Vegemite. <laughs> yeah, uh, for the Australians and you either really really like it or you really really hate it. Um yeah. Yum yum yum. Yum <laughs> yum or yeah. Any any US people visiting the UK, you need to try Marmite and then you need to try Twiglets. Which are marmite flavored crispy things. And then you have to watch the Mr. Bean episode where he turns. This is a complete rat run. Then you have to watch the Mr. Bean episode where he's desperate for snacks <laughs> at a party and he runs out of twiglets. So he actually opens the window <laughs> and grabs some twigs. <laughs> grabs some twigs and then goes to marmite. So wrong. All right, let's move on before we go any further. BMW i3 is up in its production mark. They are. Um, I, I'm trying to put in a, a timestamp quickly, um, but but I will talk like this until I'm done. I'm done. So the BMW has basically had too many orders for the i3, and and they are now upping the daily production of the i3 from I think it was oh I'm going to have to do these numbers from memory thirty cars a day 
up to 70 cars a day is that correct i think it was 70 to 100 but it's 43 percent. it's a 43 percent increase i can remember that bit which is absolutely insane and we'll probably take their first years of production over the 20,000 well they originally said they were going to do 10 yeah and now it's going to go over 20,000 so so almost doubled well, and and this done. is this is without it actually being delivered to customers yeah. in the US. Yeah. So this is European sales and and well, US pre-sales. The, the US cars are on their way. I saw yes. a, a a post from Tom Malogny earlier on this week saying, "Oh my 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 car's been delayed because the ship's been delayed bringing it oh. over." Um. So I think there are some cars that are very close to to coming to production. And it was a very careful announcement by, by BMW. It was, we have upped production to keep up with demand rather than we are upping production. Because, I mean, the carbon footprint of the BMW i3 is actually quite big. Well, I, they I, I guess. The raw, car, the raw materials they use to make carbon fibre to Washington State, where they make the carbon fibre, they then ship it from Washington State all the way to Germany, where they turn it into carbon fibre body panels. And then they ship it somewhere else where they make the car and then they deliver it around the world. So your American i3 has already been in America once already. I mean, that's the same with any car. I mean, my Leaf's been halfway around the world. Um, Especially those first generation Leafs yeah. as well. So, I mean, it would be interesting to see where, where the localization comes in, where, where BMW starts manufacturing elsewhere. Ben, do you think There was BMW um, will... someone, someone in the UK who um, needs a new bumper for their Leaf yes. and they've been told they have to wait a couple of weeks because it needs to be shipped from Japan. So yes. even though we have Sunderland making the Leaf, I presume they're shipped enough parts to just assemble them together. So it's not really, and I suppose this is the modern world we live in, it's not really when you say the car is built in the US or the car is built in right. the UK. It's not. It, it's assembled in the US and the UK. And it's one of the yeah. things... Sorry, Ben, carry on. Well, I was, was going to say, you know, the, the world that we live in where, where things are manufactured all over the planet, it's, it's getting to kind of a strange point. I, I, a while back, I was at a car show showing off, uh, I think, our plug-in Prius, and there was a little old lady there who said, oh, that's a Japanese-made car. I'm not going to buy anything made from Japanese company. And, I, you know, really the long answer is, well, look, all, all cars are built all over the world now. I mean, something might be assembled in the United States, it might be assembled in Germany, but the, the parts really get shipped all over the world. Um, uh, if you just don't even worry about gasoline at all, there's already a tremendous amount of energy put into cars to, to make them and to ship the parts all over the world and uh, ship the finished car out when you're done. Uh, geez, you know, you add all that up and it kind of makes me want to get a bicycle or something. <laughs> But, and it, it does kind of, it also illustrate the need for us to convert cars and work on cars. And I know Mark have had this backwards and forwards chat this week with me about um, converting cars and me going, well, you only want people to convert cars who actually know what they're doing as opposed to people who don't, because that would give EVs a bad name, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, one of my good friends is, is, has launched her, her Morris Minor conversion project this week. And well, there her argument is that, this is a car that's been around for 40 years. It was made in the UK. Um, and she wants to give, continue that car's decreasing carbon footprint and next chapter by converting it to electric. Um, yeah. Ben, sorry, you were going to say something. Well, there, there's, there's even some cars out there where um, in a few cases there's vehicles you can't even get parts for anymore. Um, which in some cases, those would make like really cool classic EV conversions. Um, we actually have a local company that they, they build generators and the guy started the company, uh, way back when out of his garage and he worked hard. He earned a lot of money. He deserved it. And his hobby was working on, uh, really, really old cars, early 1900s. And so they would do things like just make starter motors from scratch kind of for the fun of it, but also just parts weren't available. But, um, you know, certainly that's a kind of a cool use of uh, certain vehicles is, yeah, why not convert them to electric? I mean, if you, you know, the uh, cylinders aren't available anymore, uh, you know, put something with a little electromagnetism in there instead. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I like that idea. EVs for the win. All right. Um, next story, Mark. Are you ready next for story. the next story? I, I, I'm getting the time code now. Meanwhile, in China... Uh, Volvo has just uh, unveiled the V, sorry, the S60. I think I might have said V60 in the show notes. Actually, no, no. The S60L, S60, yeah. 
PPHEV. I don't understand. <laughs> you have no idea how much trouble I had with that when recording 10. <laughs> the S60L PPHEV. Uh, yeah. It's the L so for the long, S6, long base. Yeah, long, long base. Because that's popular petrol, in China. Petrol, petrol plug-in, plug-in, hybrid. plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. <sighs> Why do we keep coming up with these stupid acronyms, Volvo? <laughs> we don't! No, I said, we why just do we have keep to say coming them. up with it, Volvo? Um, I love Volvo. I think they're quite an endearing car company. They, they, they had the, Obviously, they had the V60 plug-in hybrid, which is diesel, and I think that's why they put the extra P on uh, in Europe, and I've driven it, and it's a very nice car. This one uses the same kind of through-the-road hybrid drivetrain, and it's going to be uh, really targeted at the, 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 the growing Chinese middle class who look for long wheelbase versions of, of cars because it's, you know, more prestigious. Um, they want the plug-in uh, incentives. Maybe they're not quite ready for a fully electric yet. Um, sort of 30 miles in EV range and then the rest uh, in a in conventional uh, petrol engine. If it's anything like the diesel version, it's actually more efficient as a petrol car or, di- or an internal combustion engine um, than the Volt. Ben. Yeah. Do you think this will ever well, come to the to the states? Uh, I I hope it does. I've actually been a, a pretty big fan of uh, plug-in hybrids in general. Um, what I usually hear uh, in my area about the Volt is it's one of those vehicles people kind of love or hate, and there's a lot of uh, bad blood still with uh, GM and crushing the EV1, all that sort of mm-hmm. thing. But in general, I I really like the Volt. I I just wish it was a little bit more efficient when it was running on gasoline and, you know, not a lot of headroom in the the back of it, but I've always seen it as kind of a a bachelor's car. But it's a really great vehicle for um, a lot of people, for a lot of the places that that folks live in the United States. So any more uh, plug-in hybrids that we can get around here would be uh, just fantastic. The more the merrier gives uh, consumers more options. Yeah. Mark? Yes, I, I I would really like them to bring this to the UK. Actually, I could see it. I could see these kind of cars working. I guess what I what I want in the EV world is more choice, and this is is a yet another choice people can have to buy. And I could see it being used. There are a couple of people in and around my area who have these kind of larger cars that kind of are indicative of of upper middle management and senior management kind of level positions you you know that car that goes with that position you kind of mentally associate it and i could see it working really well and hopefully if if it is more efficient than say the volt and the ampere is when it's running on on petrol then that will cause GM to want to try and improve their ratings. And that's yeah. what we want to get into. We want to get into an EV arms race, essentially. And yes, I think yes, that's it's kind of happening with pure EVs at the moment because I all, all of the rumours surrounding Nissan and the, the double oh. battery pack, 150 miles, it, it's a direct answer to Tesla saying they're going to bring in a reasonable price card. And GM have reacted to that as well. So we need that kind of same push in the hybrid world i think we need the arms race to go on there as well and and i think the other thing to to note is the speed of this car it's it's very fast to 60 miles an hour which is going to get people excited and it's something you've moaned about in the past mark yeah well that, if you're sticking an electric motor into something give it a decent north 60 that's kind of what electric motors are good at just just make it fly off the line it give, does make, make you it wonder. so that everyone who gets in it goes Whoa, holy and, the, and invokes any deity they happen to believe in. That's what we want with electric cars. Yeah, yeah. We want them to be a religious experience. Uh, I'm just looking at the specs here. I think I can't read. I don't have my reading glasses on. This is terrible. 7.9 seconds? 5.5 seconds. 5.5. Oh, sorry. Yes, I'm Which thinking of something else. better than the i3. Hello, BMW. And it's a much, much heavier car. Sometimes the, uh, you know, the zero to 60 times are always what's what's listed and quoted and everything. But uh, the first time I got, got to ride in a Tesla Roadster, it was on a 25 mile per hour road. So the driver just accelerated from zero to 25, which was exactly one very girly scream <laughs> in how long it took to get there. Or a while back, I, I was out with a friend um, and he had a Mitsubishi iMev and he dropped me off at the hotel. And when he was leaving, uh, now that car has a... a kind of a mechanical handbrake on it. So he set the handbrake and then pressed the accelerator and let off. And the thing just took off like a rocket. <laughs> and I don't know offhand what the zero to 60 time on that car is, but 
boy, peeling out of a parking lot, it, it really, yeah. really went. And you it's know, one of my it, favorite things to do. Is to do it's, exactly a, it's a fun that. little car, you know, and, and people forget that, like, oh, heck with zero to 60 times, like electric cars are fun to drive. And if you got a button selection on the dash that lets you kick it into a sport mode, do it like like on the volt it's really fun to drive in that sport vote sport mode just hit that button and you know yeah. it, it's a blast and i don't care if you have a city car or a tesla or a volt or anything in between um if for no other reason you know the no gasoline and eco this and that they're just fun and that's what i really <laughs> encourage everybody to do is just go test drive an electric car oh you've never driven yeah. a leaf before you know go go just on down do to your it. nissan dealership just go for a test drive see how you like it it's it's a blast and that's what we need to do to really convert uh people over to evs just get them riding them just go I, for a I, test drive. I i sometimes admit to sitting in front of someone on the motorway at like 50 and then just opening up the throttle if you're listening to this now in an electric car i know that there is at least one person doing that do not follow what i just said uh, but it is official moving on to the to the final story of the segment electric car sales have doubled every year for three years this is fantastic. This is from a German study. Um, interestingly, it's a German uh, organization that study um, hydrogen as well. Solar energy and hydrogen research at Baden-Württemberg, um, who have been examining the global electric car market. Now, they haven't included um, buses or commercial vehicles or motorbikes in this. Or they've hybrids. Only, or hybrids. They've only included plug-in cars. And uh, so that's electric and plug-in hybrids. They say um, in 2012, there were just under 100,000 uh, cars registered in the world. At the end of last, uh, at the end of 2012, sorry, at the end of 2013, no, beginning of 2012, there were under 100,000. Beginning of 2013, there were 200,000. And we've already passed the 400,000 mark. And if this continues, we'll have a million plug-in cars on the roads of the world by 2016 that is phenomenal growth and there isn't really anything we can say to this other than yay and i i think it shows the the momentum as well it's 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 not a it's not a linear growth so it's not a, a group of people convincing another group of people it's more people seeing them on the road and therefore seeing them as a viable option and therefore making the leap it's it's a it's a snowball effect which is what we want and and we all know it's it's just a matter of getting people to test these cars. I've got a friend who's hugely sceptical about electric cars. So as soon as um, all the rapid chargers in the UK get upgraded, I'm whizzing down to his house so he can drive my car because I'm utterly convinced for his daily commute, he will switch to an EV because it, for him, driving is about the experience and the fun. And at the moment, he believes that's all to do with the sound and the noise of the car and shifting gears. Whereas I think if I can get him to sit in an EV and he realise it's actually more about the thrill of the acceleration and throwing it around corners and the, and the lower down uh, center of gravity yeah. giving you a more sporty feel. I think he will switch. Fairly sure. Yeah, I, I was out driving the other day and I saw two volts and a Tesla S on the same trip, which was like the most uh, plug-in vehicles that I had ever seen at once. Now, in my area, we, we just do not have a lot of electric vehicles. We don't have any good tax incentives in the area. And I'm not right near a, a real major city with a, a lot of plug-in infrastructure. So three vehicles in one day, well, it was kind of a big, exciting thing. <laughs> and the actually, I passed the Tesla, and then I intentionally drove slow on the freeway hoping that it would pass me and he did so you might be a crazy eco car guy if you drive slow just so teslas can catch up with you but uh <laughs> i i happen to know that particular tesla owner which was funny because it's uh, uh a couple of weeks ago i saw that tesla at the gas station which is the first time i have ever seen a tesla at a gas station and of course he was just parked in front and uh, went inside the store to buy something so fun seeing evs at gas stations not buying gasoline but uh he's he's not a he's not an eco guy anything like that he just really loves the cars yeah he kind of enjoys not buying gas because he thinks there's a lot of politics and money going to the middle east and everything like that so he's he's kind of proud of not buying the gasoline yeah. but really it's the driving experience you know he just it's a great car um the worst that he had to say about it was you got to rotate the tires a lot but i guess <laughs> when you have that kind of power yes. yeah it's yeah. one thing you got to consider and on there and I think you make a really valid point there, Ben, that the, how do I put this without upsetting people? I don't think I'm going to, so I'm just going to come out and say with, say it. 
you know, all of us here today, we're quite geeky. Um, and we like EVs, we like doing DIY stuff, we like getting into the nuts and bolts of how EVs work and electric cars, as well as obviously the, 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 the environmental benefits. But I think you're from now on, from this point onwards, your average buyer doesn't won't give a a flying whatnot because all they really want is not having to buy gas, the money it will save them. And they they won't care what the battery pack modules are underneath the, the car. They won't care, uh, you know, how the controller works. They will just want to be in the car and watch it uh, save them money. Um, and there's been a been an ongoing Twitter Twitter discussion this week, hasn't about Mark about aftermarket upgrades to Leaf battery packs and all sorts. And and uh, unfortunately, I was misquoted in a forum because um, someone said to me, "Would you like to do it?" And I said. No, nah, I just don't see the point because if I want a longer range vehicle, I'll go and buy a longer range vehicle right now. Um, if it was my only car, I would definitely not do it. If it was a hobby car, you know, if I had my car in 10 or 15 years time and I still had it and I wanted to extend the range so I could go to, to classic shows and it was kind of a, not a trailer queen, but, you know, a trailer queen that you drive. I don't know what you'd call those, like a vintage runner. And you drive yeah, it, I, drive it, and you would mod it, and it was a hobby. Then yeah, sure, sign me up. And I think um, our our uh, family car is is kind of what you're you're describing. We have a 2004 Prius that has a high motion battery system in it, and we we bought it as as a used car for our, our family use, and it just happens to have this pretty cool modification to it. So what's neat about that though is it, it gives us some plug in abilities. But when it runs out of juice, it's still just a regular Prius. So yeah. heaven forbid something goes wrong with the, the battery pack system. It's still a regular car you can drive around. So for us, it's, it's worked out well. But I, I don't know that I would want to modify something like a Leaf other than, say, maybe a, add pinstriping. Or, yeah, you know, not, not until it was, makes it go faster. Not until it was a lot older, let's put it like that. Um, mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people were shocked that I said, no, I wouldn't do it. I've done DIY stuff before, and I've got to the point now where I'm too busy to have a car off the road if I, if I if it screws up but you know more power to everybody else who wants to do it so someone asked me for my personal opinion and they gave it rather than a would I advocate you do it you. you know Nikki though uh one one modification you might want are those James Bond tires that when you get a flat it automatically reinflates oh, itself. yeah would you, did, I don't know if I do I have this do I have it I don't have the nail shall I tell everybody about the nail <laughs> my wife got a puncture this week in our leaf and I'm not kidding. I have a it was drill, a big nail. I have a drill bit. That was a big nail. It was this this size. Like, like as big as my head, according it was to my that fingers. Size. Yeah, it was that size. And it, it came in and it sheared off the top of the nail and it must have gone right to the center of the alloy. She had a blowout on the freeway. She was really lucky. I got this phone call yesterday morning. Um, I've got a flat. I made it to the rapid charger, but I've got a flat. <laughs> She decided that it would be safer to to crawl down the the shoulder, you know, the the final mile to the charging station and park there. And it was, yeah, and so was, for all those people that have range anxiety, you go, oh my goodness, I'm going to run out of batteries. No, you're more likely to get a flat than to run out of juice in an electric vehicle. Yeah, I've I've had uh, I've had about seven flats in my in my EV owning career, maybe more actually, because I had one car that had one on almost a weekly basis because the tires weren't fitted properly. Um, but there we go. Let's have an ad break, shall we? Uh, if you're watching this uh, after the event, there will be a short commercial. Please watch it. Um, if you're watching, listening live, there won't be. If you're driving your EV, don't worry, we'll be right back. We're back. Part two. Yay. Um, you see, I'm, I'm name checking Dennis because he jumped in the chat room and he went, hello, I'm late for work. I'm going to listen to you on the way to work. And I just find that that's just great that we've got the technology now that people are actually listening to us in their cars especially on the especially, way to work yeah it's especially because there's a plethora of other things you could be listening to you could be listening to mp3s or audiobooks or just the radio or but no they're listening to us us because so cool they're mental <laughs> <laughs> they are mental all right upper normandy are mental um they are ha they have started a little ev revolution in upper normandy yeah, um, uh, it's really crazy incentives, Mark. Do you have the yes. figures? Oh, you you are making me do this on the oh, top of my head. I, but but I mean, there's a standard 
Uh, France wide EV incentive, like we have in the UK and like America has, except for ours work a little bit so differently. Six thousand three hundred euros. Six thousand three hundred euro, euro. There's no S when you when there's more euro, than one euro. I'm sorry. So oh. just editorialness coming out in me there. Um, and then on top of that, if you live in the region, they give you more money, which brings it up to I think eleven thousand seven hundred no. euro. Eleven thousand three hundred, oh, which reduces class. the price. Of a Nissan Leaf to um, eleven thousand five hundred euro. Wow! So that's about if you opt 13, for battery 000. leasing rather than buying the batteries outright. That's which amazing. Is fifteen thousand US, fifteen thousand eight hundred ninety-three US, and nine thousand five hundred and seven UK. Wow! wow. That's, but this there, is, the, you, you can't even get a second-hand Leaf in this oh, country but it for that gets much yet. Better. Ben, wow. would you care to guess how much the commercial uh, three-seat ENV2, uh, sorry, two-seat ENV200 van is going to be if you lease the battery No, pack? what would that be? Okay, uh, it would be 6,890 euro, which is 9,521 US. Wow. Under 10,000 US for a you brand new them, electric you can't van. buy an economy car, a stripped-down economy car for that, if not possible. Um, and just 5,695 GBP, Mark. That's which insane. Is Renault Twizy money. That's how much I paid for my Renault Twizy <laughs> when I bought it. The, That's absolutely amazing. Uh, do there, we need like, more like this? <laughs> we do. I, and this is exactly what we need as well. It, 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 we need these kind of incentives because regardless, and I was having another argument with someone on Twitter today who, who uh, when I when I kind of rebutted every one of their arguments, came back with, well, it's an opinion. It's like, no, it's a fact. And <laughs> whether you choose to believe in it or not doesn't stop the fact that it's true. EVs are better for the world. So why not have these incentives? Make it the big, I mean, the reason people go, oh, you're taking our money to buy your cars is, is generally because even with that money off, they can't afford it themselves. So it's a it's something they are putting money into which they can't take from which in a way you can kind of see why they're upset but then i do that with schooling i don't have kids but my taxes go to school so you can't really complain there's no real argument there but if the pot was bigger and more money came off and then they could get the car the argument doesn't work anymore the argument becomes well why haven't i bought one and that's what we need to get it to stupid the uk government should pay attention to france <laughs> but that would never happen. Now that it's happened in France, you can to never no. do it. Well, we don't have enough um, strikes. <laughs> Sorry. We need, are you advocating for more strike? It's strike no, action. no, because the Conservative government would probably ban it. I, well, just... I, would say, I, I would say that in the United States, we're, we're kind of all over the map, literally, when it comes to incentives, because um, we have such a thing between states' rights versus federal rights. And uh, it really just depends on where you live. There, there's a few places there's some really, really great incentives, and there's a few places where there basically aren't any. Uh, so if you live somewhere with some good incentives, you're much, much more likely to drive an EV. Uh, places like California, the Pacific Northwest have, uh, you know, they're, they're strongholds of electric vehicles. Uh, so I say keep those incentives coming because it gets people out there and into the cars. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Let's, let's make more. All right. I tell you what else gets people into EVs: scandals, <laughs> salacious scandals. This Elon Musk being naughty Elon again. Musk, Johnny Depp. That's... Who else is in the car? Oh, the, uh, the the guy who does Jarvis. The guy who does Jarvis, the voice of Jarvis, hanging out with the guy <laughs> that inspired the online, ver the on-screen version of Tony Stark. It's just amazing. Okay, that, so, that's what we need is a talking Model S with that voice. Yes. So Transcendence, the sci-fi film that's just premiering this weekend in the US with Johnny Depp. Um, Musk decided to take a, a you know a short half day excursion down to the set as you as you can yeah, do when Rebecca you're a multimillionaire. Hall, Paul Bettany, Elon Musk, um, Johnny Depp, and Wally Vista. Vista, I I went with yes, yeah, Vista. Um, all in a Tesla Model S. Elon opened it up and they got stopped for speeding. And they got a speeding ticket, or rather, Musk got a speeding ticket. This must have happened a while ago because uh, Johnny Depp only talked about it at the press um, <laughs> premiere. 
And I suspect it was just a, hey, look, I was in with Elon Musk and we got done doing something really naughty. But the thing that I think that some of these people have missed is, I don't think it was the fact that Elon Musk was driving fast that got the cops' attention. It was the fact that Johnny Depp was sitting in the front passenger seat with Paul Bettany in his lap. There's nothing. Uh, I mean, obviously, it just Elon needs to build a Model S with more seats. That's that's well, what that's what Model he should X. have said to the policeman. <laughs> Don't give me the speeding ticket. I'm just going to build the, a car with an extra seat. I can do that sort S of thing. I own point. the company that makes this car, and the, the police officer would never believe him. <laughs> Go well, on. Can then. you imagine being the police officer who pulled them over? <laughs> so you know, you you pull over a car and look who's in it. He must have thought it was like a like a, a joke or a prank or something, you know. <laughs> All right, who at the station is pranking me on this one? <laughs> Come on, who set this up? <laughs> the really funny thing is that um, um, that that Johnny Depp said that the policeman had no sense of humor about it, but Elon was no. really cool. <laughs> Elon was really cool. Yeah, it's very easy to be really Hello, cool about Elon speeding Musk, fine when heard of me. that amount of money doesn't make any sense to you. <laughs> but would you still? Sp I don't think I'd speed even if I was wealthy. I'm just I, not. I don't know. Person. I think isn't there? There's a, there's a fairly large racket in in certain areas of the UK, and I believe in the US of rich people just parking wherever they want because it doesn't matter if they get uh, a parking fine for parking on double yellow lines because they can just easily afford it. Yeah, I I got a speeding ticket in my electric car a while back. Um, I've I got a Geo Metro that I converted to electric, and I live on kind of a a little sleepy side street, but um, down the street from me it's a lake. So it's very high property values, and it's actually a different municipality where it's just rich people lake houses. There's no schools, there's no grocery stores, nothing like that, but it has a really low speed limit. So I was going down the street, test. I kind of reconfigured some things in my car. So I was testing it out, and I was going just a tad over the speed limit. But, you know, I was watching, waving to people, saying hi. I was doing everything right except watching my speed. Um, so I got pulled over by a police officer. and. I say, well, look, officer, I don't even have an engine in this car. And he says, yeah, yeah, I've heard that one before. And I'm like, no, you haven't. You've never, that's like the ultimate excuse. You've never heard that one before. <laughs> but I got a ticket. I ended up going to traffic court. So I, I showed the judge photos that I had of, of me taking the engine out of the car, putting in the electric motor, you know, all the work that I did on it. And I told him how I was. You know, I was watching out for pedestrians and everything, but it was a 15 mile per hour zone and I was going 25. So uh, he said, oh, I've never, uh, never seen anybody get a speeding ticket in an electric <laughs> car before. Uh, tell you what, uh, you had a faulty speedometer. I'm like, okay, uh, thank you, judge. Um, so I still had to pay the same fine, um, <laughs> but it, it didn't affect my insurance rates or anything like that. Oh, there's there's a judge who's really into electric cars because he once had someone who had a speeding ticket come to him and he's watching this show go going it's you you my secret is out i can't be a judge anymore <laughs> you ruined someone's name, career now the judge's name was judge stern you know i can't <laughs> make this kind of stuff up it was the day after christmas for traffic court and i was the last one to go before him so he literally dragged me across the street to the newspaper office to get a, a newspaper article done on me. But nobody was there because it was the day after Christmas. So the only person who was in was the editor. So we went straight to the editor. And the editor says, oh, judge, I've been meaning to talk to you. I want to do a story about the strangest cases that have come before you in your court. And he goes, oh, great, this guy here, yeah, he got a speeding ticket in his electric car. So I'm just trying to you know, <laughs> pinch myself and wake up from the nightmare. But uh, in, in the end, there was kind of a nice little um, newspaper article done. And mostly it was, uh, hey, you know, local guy just kind of does it himself, builds an electric car and eh, happened to get a speeding ticket. But on the other hand, they did not catch me when I was going 73 miles an hour in a 55 zone in a Geo Metro with no engine. So... I think in the end it's kind of a wash, but uh, <laughs> you know you can get speeding tickets, and you don't have to be Elon Musk to uh, get them in an electric car. No, and and it must be said we've now in we've now put a twenty mile an hour limit blanket in the city I live in, and nobody sticks to it, um, except me because my car's got a speed limiter on it, and I whack the speed limiter on, it, and then I get people getting really angry with me. So I've actually decided that it's too dangerous for me to try and stick with it um tesla 
battling, Tesla. talking about courts. Uh, this one's not involving the courts, though. Tesla and Arizona. Arizona is one of three states in the union where you cannot buy a Tesla Model S directly from Tesla. The other two states being Texas and, as of this week, New Jersey. Um, and Tesla has been trying to work with the uh, Arizona legislature to try and reverse or at least get an exemption to this law that bans it from selling direct to customers. And for the past year, pro-Tesla legislators have been trying to push through um, the Senate um, a bill that would have effectively overturned that prior rule for Tesla. Um, but this week, um, with what, less than one week to go, uh, everyone's basically calling this bill dead on the floor because of bullying tactics going on between uh, various political um, members um, and from the auto dealer associations. Now, it reads, although I don't know for sure, it reads almost like a script uh, from, from House of Cards. Um, but, uh, Mark, it's rather unpleasant, isn't it? Uh, Tesla's really got quite, quite angry about it. Yeah, they're calling it bullying tactics, which the, the, in today's world is a fairly strong accusation. I don't know. I don't know where I stand on it because they are they are doing something which is technically against the local laws in a way, but then they're also doing what's best for their customers and surely america is all about allowing businesses to do pretty much what they want because that's the free market in a way so it's really interesting although i i don't have that much of a sympathy for them because they have tried to use the gigafactory as a bit of a blackmailing bar um, with these people there. And, and that's, I, I'm sure that's why they named the four possible states for the Gigafactory was so that the two states where they couldn't sell were, were in it. So they could use it as a kind of bargaining well, chip. Yeah. And, and if you've been watching Rachel Maddow show this week, you'll know that um, uh, obviously Texas is, uh, we knew Texas is also not a good place for Tesla. Uh, but um, Nevada, where you can buy a Tesla Model S, is currently uh, going a little crazy over. Various people, it's something to do with cattle on common ground and, and it's a big, big brouhaha in Nevada right now between some, I think I'm just going to call them crazies. I'm not going to append any political um, persuasion on that, but crazies is probably the best way of putting it, <laughs> uh, which leaves New Mexico. So I think that Elon Musk needs to, uh, to ring up Walter White's widow. And, and arrange to use the factory space that, that he vacated. I think that's the way to, to deal with that one. You'll say the Model S now with meth. <laughs> yeah, why not? <clears throat> the Model Meth. The Model Meth. That should yeah. have been the title for today's show. Sorry. <laughs> All right, on to the final story of the segment. I had something bad happen to me. Other than the, 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 the puncture um, today, um, I got in my Nissan Leaf. That's nothing bad, but we were driving. I wasn't driving. My wife was driving and I looked over at the speedometer and there is a nice freshly charged battery pack with, uh, I think it had about 70 miles on the gasometer. Some people ask me why that was so low. It's so low because yesterday the car was doing motorway. And at the moment that leaf is pretty much doing 80 miles of motorway driving in two direct, uh, it, you know, so 40 miles out recharging 40 miles back uh, at 70 miles an hour, which is draining the battery pack pretty quickly. We're not, completely draining it but it's obviously needing a bit of a top up to, to get it back home again and so the the gasometer the range is going down quite a lot but next to the gasometer on the dash mark your little capacity bars i have lost one i have lost oh. my first capacity bar which we believe is the first car in the uk to lose a capacity bar yes although we wouldn't ever make such um claims would we no, no, of course not. No, um, no. But if, if anyone knows of any others, I'd be intrigued to know. Oh, actually, um, I'm just looking at it now. It said 63 miles earlier on. You probably can't see that, but it's lost a capacity bar. There you go. Which is, oh, how many miles have you travelled now? Uh, 50, so, well, it's now more than that, but it was said at the time when I took the photo, 52,778 miles, which I think, I'm sorry, is brilliant. For, for one, capacity bar is good. So my, yeah, how long have we had that car now? 
I've had that car for three years and 21 days. Yeah, and I mean, there's a lot of people who keep a car right. for, like, say, five years. So right. if you lose right. one, one capacity bar after three years, let's That's say you lose insane. one more. Um, so? Yeah, I mean, you, you can still get around. It still accelerates. Yeah. It's still a great car. Yeah. So it's a little and, sad to lose that one capacity bar. Right. But in the big picture, kind of, so what? No, so when I made the tweet about it, I went, no! And I just did, you know, over overamped it a bit, and I just posted the photo. And there's been this... Twitter storm, hasn't there, Mark? I As wouldn't call it a storm. People going, oh, this is this is demonstration why your battery needs thermal management. Oh, this is this means this is bad news for your car. Oh, this means the Nissan Leaf's a failure. Oh, this is bad. Oh, that's a bit early. And I went, no, actually, this is in line with Nissan's predictions. This this is exactly what Nissan has said and predicted would happen. And I've spoken to Nissan multiple times about this, and they've gone, yeah, your car is spot on. You know, it, it, there's nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly within our own models. 52,000, nearly 53,000 miles. I've rapid charged multiple times, and I mean multiple times. I can probably tell you, actually, um, quite a lot. And it's no problems at all. I've had no problems with it, uh, really. And it's really part of the master plan. I mean, there's always been all the talk of taking the old EV batteries and converting them to uh, stationary batteries for renewable energy systems. Uh, we also have a lot of cars, especially the hybrids, where after a long time, the battery packs aren't as good anymore. And what they really need is rebalancing. So there's companies out there that'll rebalance your pack. So maybe you'll see in a few years uh, aftermarket for the Nissan Leaf, where you can uh, get a couple of your... Uh, capacity marks back yeah. by going out and getting them a rebalanced or replace yeah, a cell. absolutely and it's 65 amp hours i've still got 65 amp hours you know 84 percent now of battery capacity or 84.9 or whatever it is that causes it to tick over and it's no less than it was yesterday when i got in it it's maybe that much less it's not a huge amount this is a gradual process it's like getting older um I uh, I made a joke earlier on today um, that middle age was the point at which being sultry caused back pain. Um, and you don't just wake up one morning and go, I'm middle aged. Like you don't wake up one morning and go, oh my goodness, I'm I'm 19. Oh, I'm getting old or, or whatever that realization is. I'm 73. Gosh, I'm nearly going to die or whatever you, you know, those realizations would be. It doesn't happen just one day it's a slow process we age slowly just like battery packs in our cars slowly well, age it's not you could this on off thing you could certainly consider the uh the loss of that capacity mark uh kind of like being a birthday you know it's it's <laughs> not that something suddenly happened right then it's just uh you know a, a a reminder of what's constantly slowly going on yeah that's a very very good explanation and and i think now is a good time as any to bring up the fact that that I'm going to be taking part in the Wave Trophy uh, this spring in six weeks' time. Um, Transport Evolved, we've been invited to be an official media partner, haven't we, Mark? We have, we have. Which is Thanks. very exciting. So you are you are going out there to, to follow their journey from yeah. Germany to Switzerland? And their rule is that you have to drive an EV. No petrol allowed, no diesel allowed. So you have to do it in an EV. So in order to kind of engage in the spirit, I'm going to be driving my Nissan Leaf from Bristol all the way to Switzerland. Um, well, to, to Stuttgart in Germany first and then from Switzerland, uh, in, oh, sorry, to Switzerland as part of the event and then from Switzerland all the way back to, to the UK. It's going to put about two and a half thousand, maybe three thousand miles on the car. And I'm going to be spending two or three days, but I'm going to be rapid charging multiple times in a day. Um, and I'm interested to see what people think about whether I should, you know, oh, you shouldn't do that. But actually, you know, a car's built, designed to be driven. It's designed to be used. Uh, I'm not going to start to modicoddle my car just because I've lost a capacity bar. So, I, but I will keep people posted on the progress as we go through. And Mark, you're not coming. I'm really sad about that. No, I, I, I we, we, we talked about various models and ways of doing it and and there's the issue that if both of us go there's there's no transport evolved in the uk really so it made sense one of us staying here and also i've got a family wedding on the last weekend of it anyway so i would have had to have come back early and 
didn't really fancy hitchhiking my way across Europe. Yeah, you, you would have only been able to have done the first sort of four days yeah. and then you would have to come back. And... Especially if while hitchhiking, the only electric rule applied because yes. having to turn down rides while hitchhiking back would be quite oh, hard. And, and, and you've also got a press launch, we found out this week, to attend. Yes, I have. I need to reply to that email. Oh, I, You're going to do a press launch. I can't. I, I can't wait to hear. What, I'm so jealous of your press launch. It's a I, Nissan vehicle. I'm not going to say any more than that. You can probably guess what it is. But it's be good. The day I'm supposed to be travelling back. So, you know, we will both be doing cool stuff. Um, that's the end of the segment. Come back. We'll be right back. Welcome to part three. We're bashing through the show today and my Kindle stopped working and I can't see what's next in the news stories for today. Uh, New York we... Auto Show. New York Auto Show. Thank you very much, Mark. That's okay. What? Nissan announced that it's planning to offer free public charging to all Leaf owners for two years under a new scheme called Easy Charge with oh, a yes. capital E and a capital Z because you have to have random no, capitals. A capital E and a capital Z. Z. It's Z, because it's E-Z. You said it yourself. E-Z charge. Only because it's a play on words. It's not E-Z charge. It should be E-Z charge. I'm telling you that. It should be Ez charge, is what it should really be. <laughs> now the musician in me is going, Ez, I'd like an E-flat card, please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. An E-flat charge. Did you, actually, is that a complete rat run? If you're a musician or a music teacher and you want to teach kids how to sing... Um, notes in in English, it's really difficult because you say you would be singing and you might go F flat, F sharp. Sorry, um, you might well F flat is E. You might go E flat. You might go D flat. Um, but in Germany, they've got single syllable names for all the letters, and you you add an I and an S if it's a sharp, and an E and an S if it's a flat. So you end up with C, cease, um, or you'd have D or Des, and it works really well. Sorry. So when you say "es," it makes me think of E flat for that reason. Okay. Yes. Back to New Back to New York and Nissan. Free charging for two years if you buy a Nissan Leaf. Again, Easy Card, um, and you can get access to one of four different charging networks and charge your car for free. Mark. Which is which is what brilliant. Tesla so does. basically, they're following the Tesla model or trying to follow the Tesla model. But Tesla runs its own network, and this is where I have a problem with this. If there is a problem, I want to com I want to commend Nissan for for making this decision. This is the right way forward. This is the right way to get bums in seats. Is to go, hey, look, for two years you're not going to have to pay to fill your car up if you're away from home. That's phenomenal. Free fuel for two years. That's brilliant, and it's not going to cost that much either, uh, is it, Ben? No, it's you know uh, I think actually last time we talked we mentioned the uh, the EMPG trying to use these fancy numbers to compare gasoline and electric and that's a little convoluted but the truth is that um, electricity as a fuel is it's pretty darn inexpensive in my area it comes out to the equivalent of uh, about a buck a gallon um, but there's there's a lot of car uh, car manufacturers that have done things now where um, you buy a new car and all your maintenance is included. So you get all the oil changes and tire rotations and things taken care of as part of buying the car. And this is just the next logical step to it. It's just that um, for how much gasoline some people use, it it just wouldn't work out for uh, for the economy. But to do it with electricity it makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of people who are just going to go, hey, I drive an electric car and I don't pay for fuel. It's 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 included or it's free is the way a lot of people are going to look at that. And that's, uh, that's, you're right. That's a great way to get uh, people into electric vehicle seats. I'm, yeah. I'm all for it. The thing that I do worry about though, is that Nissan is now relying on third party providers. And if it's anything like the UK, Mark. Yeah, that, that won't work so well. Where did you go? You vanished. You did. Uh, uh... Did I? Did I? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm vaguely aware that my, my battery on my phone is about to die. So I've just plugged it in. So I was making sure it was still charging. Okay. You're just going to. It's very, very hot. For a second there. Okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry. Uh, electric vehicles are more reliable than cell phones in some cases. So I have, to, I have to charge my phone more than I charge my car. Yeah, it's true, actually. It's true. I mean, I've got this plugged in today as well because it's the only way it's last. It's lasting. Uh, all right. So well done, Nissan. Good job. I would rather you owned and operated your own network a bit like Tesla or maybe just put supercharging capability in the Leaf. That would be good. 
Yeah, they'd need to do a lot of other stuff to leave to make it compatible. Talking about though. building things, the UK government this week has confirmed it's going to electrify a portion of the UK motorway as part of a dynamic wireless charging project. <laughs> because Idiots. everyone needs wireless charging. Ben, do you want to tell everybody how this works? Oh, well, um, basically the car is half of a transformer and the road is half of a transformer. And the electricity is transmitted in the form of uh, magnetism. It's, it's uh, the exact same way a old school transformer works. But I don't usually drive on, you know, like my computer power supply. And uh, the roads where I am, you know, it's been a tough winter. Uh, really been getting beaten up by potholes and everything yeah. else. So, um, boy, you know what it takes to just just fix roads nowadays. If you have to fix them with uh, wireless charging built in, that, that sounds like it's... Um, and going to be problematic. Nothing but problems when you look at it that way. And, and that's and it, sorry, it's Martin. how much power? I mean, we there was the European standard was agreed on for wireless charging what six months ago now, and I think that that only went up to seven kilowatts. So seven kilowatts of power. It's being transferred through a layer of tarmac. It can't be as close to the car as, say, the static ones are, because either usually there's a hump in the road which you park over, or like the buses we have, there's a cantilever sort of system underneath that brings it up to reduce the gap. So it's got a significant portion of air to go across. It's got to go through tarmac, and it's not a continuous system. They're just static ones placed at intervals. Yeah, they're, they're what they call semi-dynamic. So you drive so, over it. It's it's a like. Do you do you ever? Did you ever play? Um... Wipeout. Wipeout, thank you. I was trying to think of the name of it. It's like those things in Wipeout, and I can just see people now going down the motorway. Hey, if the UK government wants to, part, you know, put Wipeout style stripes those arrows. on those on the motorway, the arrows that do this as you're coming up to it, and you can be in the outside lane and go, oh, nuts! I need to get over to the slow lane for a boost up. Yeah, and as you're but, coming, but, and then it, and then the car accelerates. Whoosh, if if they can turn it into Wipeout, essentially, I am happy. Yeah. But, it but, sounds like the uh, Mario Kart video game, basically. Yes, yeah. But let's count the other problems. So I, I've enabled some of the problems already, why it's not going to work. The other problem, let's count how many cars currently have wireless charging. There is the... Um, and, and, of course, the... <laughs> what, why are they doing it? It's not as if the cars are out there going, if only we had wireless charging. Surely the money's better spent putting in a rapid charger infrastructure. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know, the problem that I, I, I really, I guess that I have with this is that it almost, it, it's it's bad press for electric cars. It's almost like saying, ooh, electric cars aren't good enough. They, they just, they can't make it unless we build chargers right into the road. You know, there, there's so many yeah. different weird kind of upgrades for electric cars that they just make them seem like they're somehow not good enough. And when people talk about, oh my goodness, where do I charge my electric car? And it's like, in your garage, you got a regular electric outlet, just plug in. It's not that complicated. We have electricity everywhere. And it's like we were saying, like a cell phone, you just plug it yeah. in to recharge it at the end of the day. That's it. Like who builds chargers into roads so that like we can recharge our cell phone in our pants pocket as we walk on the side of the road. Nobody's doing that, and we don't we don't need to do that for electric cars either. Is, is, it, is it the car equivalent of, of refueling a jet mid-flight? Oh, so right, they, right. maybe what yeah. we need is the petrol version of this should be trialed in the UK as well, where you dial a number and then one of those refilling jets hovers above your car while you drive down the motorway and refills your petrol tank as you're driving along. Or we could just have another electric car driving and you string out jumper cables because uh, you know, <laughs> that's going to fly really well too. You've broken me. Um, Brian Henderson, um, who very often comments on our, on our news stories, said at 300 watts per mile, 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour, at 60 miles an hour, it would, he reckons it would require about 18 kilowatts of instantaneous power transfer for a flat road in ideal weather conditions. To maintain speed and and the, this particular trial they're talking about not transferring enough power to make the car go indefinitely but essentially offering an alternative um power Range share extender. Mod model so you have for example if that's if that figure is uh, as brian suggested is 18 kilowatts you might use um you might be using i don't know 10 kilowatts from the battery pack and eight kilowatts from the road well, you know what we could do was like in the uh, in the Back to the Future movies where they have to get the 
the time machine working uh, with a, with a lightning bolt. So you just uh, run up the cable and you make sure you you hit right as the lightning bolt strikes. And uh, actually, it was kind of funny. There was an April Fool's joke this year about uh, so I I think it was somebody <laughs> in the San Francisco Bay Area with a Prius with uh, some uh, kind of metal <laughs> prongs coming up from it, so it could just tap into the trolley system yep. and drive around that way. And I I think the photo of that was 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 uh, pretty funny. You but, do uh, know. No, that we did a, a almost identical story with Nissan Leafs and Mark and I were in hysterics because we didn't communicate with these people at all. We both did essentially the same story at the same time. One with the Just Prius chose different cars. And we yeah. did one with a Leaf. Um, it's a good joke. And we actually got people, apparently radio, um, um, Gavin Shoebridge said he mentioned it on Radio Slovakia, <laughs> believing it to be real. <laughs> Well, the funny thing is, is it's it's not that far from reality. Um, I was reading a book a while back about some of the early days of electric vehicles, and there was a guy who, oh, you know, like 1910 or something like that. He just went out for a road trip on the uh, the United States East Coast, and he had, you know, one of those really early cars. It's mostly wood, and he had kind of some metal tethers that he would throw up over uh, power lines. And he would literally recharge right off of that, which is, you know, kind of like that, uh, that trolley prank. Um, but it actually, it actually did work. So this guy uh, drove all up and down the East Coast. And this was, uh, you know, way before uh, Tesla supercharging stations. That's Very brilliant. Cool. That is brilliant. Um, um, all right. Tesla Model S is almost as cheap to run as a minivan. This is a great story. Mark, you are the math expert. Thank you. I wrote this story. I don't know if anyone realises, but but the way we work at Transport Evolved is um, I'm officially editor-in-chief and Mark is editor. Not that we have any other people working with us, but we do get quite a lot of contributions and we kind of work together quite a lot. And so Mark proofreads my stuff and I proofread his stuff because it gives us make sure that we a seconds i rise yeah second second and um and i wrote this article this week knowing that mark's one of mark's pet hates is um americanization of british english and so i wrote a story with math in it lots <laughs> it actually hurts my brain as i'm reading it go on tell it, us the story though it has so a little it's... s versus a minivan so the story was, it's, it's, and I'm going to shorten it a little because it's quite a long story, but uh, basically a family were looking to what could be their next car. And they were doing the very, very sensible thing of looking at the cost of the car to buy, but also the long-term cost of it. And they had like this short list that they came to, which had sensible cars on it and then had fun cars like the Model S. And in doing the calculations for all of these various cars, it turned out when they initially did it that running the Model S over a period of 10 years was cheaper than buying a, a car that I'd never heard of, an Odyssey or something. Was that what it was called? Honda that, minivan. A, Honda Odyssey. That's a, that's a fairly popular model. And, and they worked out that over 10 years, the Model S was cheaper. So they went and bought a Model S. And, and what was wonderful about this, they put all of their calculations online to allow other people to see it. it subsequently, some other math people i said math see i can do it um, came <laughs> along and looked it through and they found a small mistake in it which made it work out that the model s was actually more expensive but in the range of 200 dollars a month more expensive so basically for a 200 dollar premium you can have a model s over this standard minivan if you take cost of ownership over 10 years into account which I thought was pretty brilliant. And, and that's exactly what we need more people to do. Of course, it requires a certain amount of capital up front to buy these cars as well, which is, is a prerequisite, I guess. Yes. Yeah. I, I actually did um, some similar calculations a little while back. We were having um, some trouble with one of our vehicles and we were looking at uh, the possibility of buying a used Nissan Leaf. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of buying new vehicles because they're just really expensive. And as soon as you buy it, you know, there goes uh, most of the value of it. But uh, a friend of mine was actually the first guy in the state of Wisconsin who to have a Nissan Leaf. And uh, he traded his in to get the, the next newer one. And I knew where his car was and I knew that he took care of the batteries. So it would be a, a good deal. And I did all the math and I figured out that if you could buy a Nissan Leaf for 
dollars and used it the way we use our vehicles. You know, I looked at our, our uh, mileage logs and figured out how many miles we put on per year and oil changes and everything like that. And uh, by figuring in the, the, the gas and oil and maintenance, a $20,000 Nissan Leaf would pay for itself over its remaining lifetime. So you could actually have, no joke, a free electric car. Now, the math wouldn't work out for us for a $32,000 Nissan Leaf. It certainly wouldn't work out for, a, uh, for the, the Tesla. But um, comparing a used Nissan Leaf to um, other used vehicles, yeah, you can come out ahead. And unfortunately, we were about that far away from buying that car, and uh, we called up the dealership, and uh, they're like, oh, yeah, we still have that on our webpage, but uh, we, we just sold that. So it was about that far away from having uh, what in the long term would have been a free Nissan Leaf. Wow. You have almost completely vanished, Ben, in terms of... Oh, no. I think is your connection. It sounds like you're on a, a, um, a dial-up suddenly. Mark, are you still oh, there? Oh, I'm still here. I don't have I, connection issues today. No. <laughs> I, I hear you well. Yeah, it's just like... But it's good because it's nearly the end of the show. He's <laughs> almost dying. Um, final story of the show, Little Coda. Little Coda sedans, Mark. This is one oh, actually Ben needs to listen to. So, Ben, I hope you can hear me. Yeah, I got to get out to California and, and rustle one of those up. Yeah, you really do. And because there are some, uh, the, essentially, right, we'll go back to the beginning. Story of Coda sedan. Coda sedan was a, a vehicle, an electric car, made for a very short period of time. Um, had been promised to market for something like seven years, I think. It's something stupid. I mean, it started off as, as the Miles um, SX X S five hundred. Then it became the Coda sedan when that car didn't materialise. And it's based on a, a Chinese-made copy of a car that was originally designed for Volvo and Mitsubishi in a joint project between the two car companies. Um, and it's a Paninfarina designed car originally. Obviously, it's, this is the, this is a kind of like a third generation variant of it, which Coda um, bought over to the US as um, semi finished cars. They then assembled the battery packs and put those in the cars in California, which then qualified the car to be US, which then meant that they were th technically eligible for the low interest loans from the Department of Energy under the Advanced Vehicle Technology Manufacturing Program. Um, they didn't actually end up getting any loans monies for various reasons. And the cars were on sale for a very short period of time. Company um, went into, uh, I think it's Chapter 11, bankruptcy protection. Um, the, the cars uh, have ended up just sitting there. There's 80 of them. They haven't been sold. Some of them are complete. Some of them parts cars. Uh, and they're ending up on eBay. Um, and the really sad thing about this is that these cars are, some of them are actually ready to go, uh, Ben. Uh, I already have a car in my garage that I got to get fixed up and working. But, uh, you know, the Coda was kind of a strange car because, um, you know, the Nissan Leaf, it's been successful because it had a really big car company behind it. Um, Tesla has been successful through a lot of hard work and making some really amazing high performance cars. And the Coda, it, it really didn't have either of those going for it. I think the main thing for advertising the Coda was it's the only electric car with a real trunk. Uh, so, you know, it's like, okay, it's not a hatchback, but uh, what other redeeming qualities does it have? I mean, it, it, I've never driven an electric car that I haven't liked, no matter who made it or what size it was or anything. So I'm sure the Coda is a great car too. It's just, I, I think it kind of fell prey to Oh, probably not enough uh, cup holders and uh, you know fancy colors <laughs> and you know the other things that the, uh, the the mainstream American car buying public wants. But uh, you know, it's it's again, it's a shame that um, you know we we don't have them out there because what I would really love to see is more good affordable electric cars out there. You know, just just a nice car you can afford and hop in, and um, that's really getting taken over by by the Leaf. You know, they're they're a little bit pricier than other gasoline cars you can buy but you know like we were saying a few minutes ago once you figure in what you save for gas and everything it's the same price as any other car but it's fun to drive and it's all electric and uh you know it's kind of a shame coda didn't didn't get up and going well i'd be interested to see what happens to them in the end mark uh and ben 
Yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm looking wondering... to see if they're still on eBay. So, so you carry on that. My my current, uh, well, not a uh, theory. That's wrong. But one thing that I'd considered is uh, didn't EBTV buy up all of the old Better Place battery packs? That, yes, and they did. There are now a lot of empty shells and cars that were designed to become electric cars just sat there going cheap as well. It becomes quite a natural second investment for them to make. Um, I don't know if it's quite their style of car, though, knowing other cars and projects that I think they're working on. So I don't know. It's, it's possible. I could definitely see an EVTV car, an EVTV EV. Um, being released with old Renault Fluence packs and possibly a Coda body shell. I can't to them. see it anymore, but I can tell you what else is on eBay right now. Oh, there's always something good on there. This is this is this is awesome. This is awesome. I don't know if anyone can see this. This is a 1912 Melbourne Electric. Wow. For for fourteen thousand pounds. That's dollars. Sorry. Currently fourteen thousand dollars on eBay. Although that was something I, I always, I always thought would be a really fun project. Is in, in my area, there's there's two or three really old cars that you see drive around in the summer that have been restored, like Model Ts, and I think it'd be just a blast get some real old car and convert that to electric, and you know, tool around town in an electric Ford Model T, do something like that, it'd be a blast. Well, you know what? I completely agree with you on that because I wanted to do something very similar. Um, and I, I want a hot rod. rod. There you go. Let's let's all do it. Conversion I want I want to buy. You can get some very nice hot rod style kit cars with the you know the big things on the side. Fill them for the batteries. They'd be an amazing car to have. Boom, boom. And on that note, we should finish. I hope everyone who is celebrating the various festivals that are happening this weekend has a lovely time. Um, and we will see you next week, won't we, Mark? At the usual time of five p.m. BST. BST. We may have to move the show back uh, an hour, depending on, on childcare duties at my end. And Mark and I, we are also going to drive very expensive cars very quickly, aren't we? We, we are. We are within a certain definition of very expensive, but yes, we are. Mm, mm. Good. We're going to, no, they are going to be very expensive cars. There will be petrol cars there as well. I will get you in a petrol car going sideways as well as an EV, don't worry. <laughs> Okay. Okay. That sounds fair. That really is it, folks. Thanks for joining us. And as always, don't forget to plug in. See you soon. Thanks to Ben. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.